In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God's Providence of Creation An amazing message of life about human salvation. The origin of the earth and the universe. Dr. Jerrock Lee's lecture on Genesis will address interesting subjects such as the providence of human creation, the great flood of Noah, the pyramid, the black hole, etc. Dear viewers, we hope that you will come to have love and a reverent fear of God from the center of heart through the message preached by a worldwide revivalist, Dr. Jerrock Lee. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Dear Christian TV viewers, and Manmin TV viewers. This is the 31st lecture on Genesis, The Seed of Life, Part 3. Did you make bread out of last two, the Seed of Life messages? As God the Father explained this Seed of Life, He said He would prove this message is true. Some people in the Bible recovered the youth back, and there are many people who can prove it true these days. The power of God the Father will come unto you when you believe this message and practice it. The aging process will be slow. Even if the aging has processed quite far, you will receive the strength. And then, so many of you will testify. I used to have no strength, but after I heard this seed of life message, I came to think I can do it. I already heard many testimonies. In just two weeks, some people testify that they experienced God's grace once they had this thought. As I decided to do as I was told to and began to put on what I heard into my heart, I was given the breath of life, and now I feel a surge of new strength. I used to have no energy, but now I feel energy in me. The breath of life that God the Father gives is working in me like this. God the Father will work so that many of you can testify like this. And He will reveal how blessed it is to say Amen to the word preached from this altar. I pray in the name of the Lord that you may receive this message by faith again and experience the power of God. Dear brothers and sisters, I said that God the Father put all the genetic information concerning a man into the nucleus of a cell. But today's message is somewhat difficult, some technical and um, professional terms are used uh, in this lecture. So please listen carefully today. Let me repeat it. I said, God put the, all the genetic information concerning a man into the nucleus of a cell. 
facial appearance, height, the physical constitution, skin color, and etc. All kinds of information about body organs and their functions are stored in such a tiny nucleus. How is it possible? It's so mysterious, isn't it? So you should be the best scientist if you want to become a scientist. And you should be the best doctor. The best scientist cannot deny the existence of God. Concerning all things, it's impossible if it is not the work of God the Almighty. That's the reason. Thanks to the highly developed scientific technology, people can produce semiconductors. 60 nano, 8 gigabit memory chip developed by Samsung in 2004 was 4.3 by 3.6 centimeters, about a half of a uh, normal name card. This memory chip could store 20,000 books worth data or 1,024,000 newspapers. Well, you should look at the screen quite often. Isn't it amazing? It can store 1,024,000 newspapers inside its chip. It is such an amazing technology to store such huge information in a size that is just the half of a name card. It is possible even with human wisdom and power. Now, what is, is it that God the Almighty cannot do? Do you want me to compare the capacity of a man-made memory chip to a DNA that God created inside? The diameter of a nucleus is about 5 micrometers. 0 0.0005 centimeters. So it is too small to see with your bare eyes. If we write on a paper all the DNA genetic information stored in such a tiny nucleus, the paper will become an encyclopedia which contains 3 billion words. It will become an encyclopedia which contains about 3 billion words in it. If one volume of the encyclopedia had 1,000 pages, the entire encyclopedia is a set of 1,000 volumes. All this usual amount of information is stored in such a tiny nucleus. Furthermore, this genetic information is stored in all 60 trillion cells identically. To count one trillion, you count like this. Uh, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 50,000, 20,000, 30,000, and so on and on. This genetic information is stored in all 60 trillion cells identically. If the size of the nucleus that contains DNA becomes the same with the size of 60 nano 8 gigabit memory chip, the nucleus can contain about 100 million times more information than a set of 1,000 volumes. If the wisdom and power of man who created the memory chip are amazing, how much more amazing are the wisdom and power of God? You can see this. No matter how well it develops, it cannot be compared with the power of God. No way. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I said God planted the seed of life into the cell that becomes the focal point in a man's body. When seen with spiritual eyes, the seed of life can be found in the heart, which is both the functional and positional center of the body. Where is your heart? Point with your finger where the heart is.
just as blood that pumps out of the heart spreads to every corner of the body. The spiritual strength also pumps from the heart area and spreads to the whole body and controls entire cells of the body. That's why people instinctively think that the mind is near the heart. Where is it? You automatically point at your chest, right? Near your heart. Even if a man's brain is functionally dead, people consider the man to be alive when his heart is beating. Even if he is a brain-dead patient, doctors decide he is dead only when his heart doesn't beat at all. By the way, you should spiritually understand well the fact that the seed of life is planted in the most focal cell. The seed of life that is planted in the center of the body can be compared to a buoy. A buoy is a floating object that used to show ships and boats where they can go and to warn them of danger. It is connected to the ground under the sea, and thus its location is always fixed, no matter how the sea current changes. It's the same with this buoy that the seed of life is planted in the cell that is the focal center of a body. The seed of life is planted in the cell of the heart that is both the functional and positional center of a body in your body. However, just as the sea under the buoy keeps changing, the cell that becomes the center of the body can also change. Just as the location of the buoy is fixed in the sea, the seed of life is fixed in the center of the body, overlapping with the cell that is in the center of the body. Cells of the body repeat the cycle of creation and destruction, but the seed of life in a fixed location controls other cells of the entire body through a new cell. Let me tell you one more example. The position as president has the authority to govern a nation. However, the man who becomes the president may change it as his term in office is finished. Even though the man changes, however, the authority given to the position holder continues. The president can enjoy his authority only when he holds the position. Once he is out of the office, the authority is moved to the next president. The next president enjoys it now. Whoever becomes the president can enjoy the authority as the president. It is the same with the relation between the seed of life and the cell that is located in the center of the body. The cell in the location may change, but the seed of life that is positioned in a fixed location continues to work through a new cell. Now, once this seed of life awakens as the Holy Spirit enters, the spirit needs to be provided with spiritual water and light to grow up. I told you in the previous lectures, the seed of life wakes up when the uh, Holy Spirit comes in. The Spirit needs to be provided with spiritual water and light to uh, grow up. I said, the body can be controlled in a spiritual dimension as the Spirit grows up to be big enough to cover the nucleus, which is the focal of the body. You should also correctly understand in a spiritual sense that the spirit covers the nucleus that is the focal of the body. The size of the spirit cannot be measured by physical measurement. Moreover, the size of a nucleus, which is about 5 micrometers in diameter, is too small to be visible. 
Then is the size of the spirit also as small as nucleus? The size of the spirit can be bigger than the nucleus, and it can be bigger than the earth. Then why is it that I compare the size of the spirit to the size of the nucleus? It is to help you understand better the controlling scale and range of the spirit, for you to understand, okay? It helps you understand better the controlling scale and range of the spirit. You should correctly understand the terms of today and make it the bread of life. I already explained that if the spirit grows to, you know, as big as the nucleus, the control of the flesh over the body stops, and thus uh, the body will not uh, age anymore. It will not get old. Let me repeat it. If the spirit grows to be as big as the nucleus, the control of the flesh over the body stops. And thus, the body will not age anymore. Even though you are 40 years old, once you enter the spirit, say 10 years later, you will have no wrinkles added on your face. Moreover, I also explained that as it becomes the whole spirit too much bigger than just covering the nucleus, the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension. Again, as it becomes the whole spirit too much bigger than just covering the nucleus, the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension, not in the fleshly dimension. And I told you three phenomena that take place as the body is controlled in the spiritual dimension. First, all the organs of the body begin to function normally, and their conditions are maintained at the best level all the time. All the organs of the body begin to function normally, and their conditions are maintained at the best level. Second, germs and viruses cannot enter into you, and you will not be harmed even when you drink poison. I'm talking about those who enter the whole spirit. Third, you will not get old but you may also get your youth back. On entering the spirit, the aging process stops. As you come into the whole spirit, you will not only stop aging, but you will also recover your youth. There is an actual case of recovering youth in the Bible. Let's take a look at Abraham's case first. When Abraham got his only begotten son Isaac, he was at the age of 100. Romans 4.19 says, Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body. Now, as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. When God promised to Abram at the age of 99 that he would give Abram a son, his body was not in a physical status of being able to father descendants. It was the same with his wife Sarah. But Abraham believed what God said without doubt, and he was able to have his son. Abraham and Sarah could conceive Isaac not because they were rejuvenated, but it was possible thanks to the power of God. At this point in time, Abraham had not yet entered the whole spirit, not to mention Sarah. Then when did Abraham become a man of all spirit? Abraham became a man of the whole spirit when he passed the test of faith of giving his son Isaac as a sacrificial offering. James chapter 2 verses 21 to 23 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar? When God said, Abraham, just obey. It was not an easy situation to obey, but he did. If it were you, many of you might, you know, make excuses. Didn't you promise to me? 
kings will come through my son, Isaac. And you promised me with many other things. How can you tell me to give him up as a sacrifice now? Many of you who say like this. How many would obey without objection? He offered up Isaac, his son, on altar. You see the faith was working with his works. And as a result of the works, faith was perfected. When he obeyed like this, his faith became perfected. His faith came to be recognized by God when he obeyed. And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So when I, when I ask you, you say you believe in God. When I ask, you say you believe the Bible. Do you really? If you do, why do you not live by the word of God? And why don't you obey? If you do, why can't you give whole time? God says He will surely give you a blessing by opening the gate of heaven when you obey. But you don't. You don't believe. If you do, you will obey. And you will receive blessing. But the truth is, you don't believe. And it was reckoned to Him as righteousness. And He was called the friend of God. What an honor it is, the friend of God. As Abraham became the man of the whole spirit like this, you can see that he then recovered his youth. Genesis 25 verses 1 and 2 says, Now Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore to him Zimran and Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Sua. Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore to him Zimran and Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua. At the age of 99, he couldn't father children, but he fathered six more sons at an age well over 100 years old. This record can be found to have occurred after Sarah died at the age of 127, and Isaac married at the age of 40. Therefore, you can determine that Abraham was well over 140 years old. After realizing his original evil through the tests that God allowed to him, Job entered the spirit. Job was originally blameless and upright, and he feared God. And then he realized his original evil and cast it off. He could enter the spirit and whole spirit quickly. He realized his original evil. Job was actually blameless and upright, and he feared God. So once he realized his original sin, he could cast it off on the spot right away. He didn't even struggle to the point of shedding blood. He could cast it right away. Then everything, both in spirit and in flesh, was recovered, and he received a blessing in which his former positions were doubled. Everything was recovered. Job chapter 1 verse 3 lists the possessions of Job before he underwent trials. It reads, 
His possessions also were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all the men of the East. The greatest. Then Job 42 verse 12 lists Job's positions after he finished the trials. It reads, the Lord blessed the later days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep. It was originally 7,000, doubled, and 6,000 camels. It was 3,000 before, and it doubled, and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 female donkeys. You can notice here that the numbers of sheep, camels, oxen, and donkeys became exactly the double of the original. And Job 42 verse 13 says, He had seven sons and three daughters. How old was he then? He had sons and daughters and, you know, they all got married before, but those sons all died before. So he was old, but after he entered the Holy Spirit, he got seven sons and three daughters. If he gave birth every two years, it would take 20 years. If he were three years, every three years, and then three, 30 years then. If he were every year, then it would take 10 years. The next verse, Job 42, 14, mentions the names of his three daughters. And Job 42, verse 15 says, In all the land, no women were found as so fair as Job's daughters. He now had beautiful daughters. If you enter the whole spirit, you can have fair and beautiful daughters and sons like this. Before Job underwent refinements, he always worried about his children. However, once he entered the spirit and the whole spirit through the refinements, the children he had later became joy to Job. Before he entered the spirit or whole spirit, even though you know, he was blameless and upright, he was always full of worries. He worried whether his children committed sin before God, and so he gave burnt offerings to God for his own children. But now, he had nothing to do with worries and anxieties anymore. Once he entered the Spirit and the Holy Spirit through the refinements, the children he had later became joy to Job. In addition, it is written that Job had ten children in his later days. In other words, as he became old. After Job underwent refinements, he became a man of spirit and then a man of whole spirit. And as a result, he recovered his youth. There are some people in the Bible who recovered youth back, just as, you know, Moses. Dear brothers and sisters, as you enter the whole spirit, you can control your body as you please. You can control your own body as you see fit. In my case, I can adjust the weight or shape of my body in a short period of time once I make a decision. I can do it if I want to. If I think my body weighs too much, I decide to control what I eat, and soon I can lose as much weight as I want. Once you come into spirit and whole spirit, your body will obey as you make a decision in your heart. Again, so once you uh, come into spirit and whole spirit, your body will obey. Without wasting time and money on diet or exercise, you can become healthy and beautiful anytime. Dear brothers and sisters, so far I've explained that once you come into the spirit and whole spirit, your body will be controlled and that you can become healthy regardless of your age. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. As your spirit and soul prosper, the control of the body is managed in the dimension of the spirit, and thus you become healthy. In addition, the blessing of being prosperous in all respects also follow, and family evangelization can be accomplished. It's possible because authority follows your lips as you enter the spirit and the whole spirit. 
Well, it will, talk, it will take about an hour to explain why family evangelization is easy when you enter the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, and why husbands stop persecuting you. It takes, you know, too long to explain. You can also receive financial blessing as Job did. You can harvest 30, 60, 100 times more than you sow. Why did the Bible record all the details like this? 7,000 became 14,000, 3,000 became 6,000. Why did the Bible count all these things? God wants to help us realize something. When you repent as Job did, casting the original evil and repent and become sanctified, God will give this financial blessing to you. Job received double the blessing, but his blessing could not be compared with anything. He became the greatest in the East. What a blessing it was! Someone used to give $100 as tithe, and um, he received 100 times blessing. But another who used to give $1 million received double the blessing. His tithe became $2 million. But the first one received a 100 times blessing. which is smaller than the other's blessing. So Job received mm, double portion blessing, but it was huge. Just as Joseph and Daniel became the prime ministers in foreign countries, those who have entered the Spirit and the Holy Spirit have potential to be recognized in the world as well. Think of what Joseph went through from the... Uh, age of 17 to 30. He didn't have evil. He didn't complain when he was wrongfully accused. It is possible because of receiving the wisdom and understanding of heaven that cannot be compared to any knowledge of the world. Besides, once you enter the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, no matter what you pray for by faith, you can receive the answer. And thus, you can live a blessed life regardless of the world situation or flow. There is one thing that I have told you since the beginning of this church. I'm always healthy. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. People make mistakes. And there are many germs and diseases in the world and in the air. Nobody knows when and how they will enter your body and grow up in you. But you don't notice it. But I tell you confidently, I have no worries. So many people catch cold and flu and suffer from high fever these days. So many people receive prayer from me. When I pray for them, their spit come into my mouth through their breath sometimes. When I pray for them, the germs and flu come into me and into my mouth. Just how many people do I pray for? When I prayed for swine flu victims, it was perfect for the flu to sneak into me. I pray for them, and they had fever and cough. When I prayed, and they said, Amen, Amen. What came into my mouth and nose? But I never worried. I don't worry even when I put my hand over their wounds. People around me give me towel. Because the next person worry about you know, what I touched before. So I claim my hand with the uh, towel. And thus, you can live a blessed life regardless of the world situation. Since I have personally experienced all this, I can confidently testify to them. I've witnessed that as I obeyed the word of God and kept it, God blessed me just as He promised to me. It is not only about diseases. 
but also about financial uh, blessings. I met God in April 17, 1974. As I realized all the seven-year-long diseases were healed by the power of God, I came to believe that God is alive. Then in May 1978, I heard the voice of God during my prayer. I refined you for three years and now equip yourself with the word for three more years. You have loved me more than your parents, brothers, sisters, wife, and children. It wasn't long after I accepted the Lord, but soon God gave me this kind of word. I refined you for three years and now equip yourself with the word for three more years. You have loved more. You have loved me more than your parents, brothers, sisters, wife, and children. Leave the current business now and go your way. Let your wife manage the store. My thoughts are not the same as man's. Your wife will earn more money than you and your wife to earn together. I kept the store and my wife went out to sell cosmetics. We had to earn money to pay the debt. The debt was too much because you know, my wife borrowed you know, too much money when I was sick. I'll bless you that you will give to many but borrow from none. I will bless you abundantly. As you obey, your rice container will never be empty and your cash box will always be full. After you arm yourself with the word for three years, you will go across rivers and oceans and do miracles and wonders. His word indicates that I already came into the Spirit through the three-year-long refinement. I later realized that it took exactly three years for the refinement, just as God the Father said. Until God said it was three years, I didn't realize exactly three years passed by. On July 10, 1974, as I and my wife visited my father to celebrate his birthday, it wasn't long after I accepted the Lord. We went to uh, my father's house to celebrate his birthday. How happy I must have been. I was healed after I was sick for seven years. I was so full of emotion when I got there. My wife came to, you know, my father's house the next day. You know, I came down because um, she was running a beauty shop. My wife left and ran away from home. It happened on my father's birthday. It was too shocking. My wife came back in about 120 days, and she and I together attended the revival meeting, which was held in November that year. And it was when I earnestly started to live as a Christian. I was always full of joy and happiness thanks to the hope of for heaven, but I was in great debt and so poor because of the seven-year lung diseases. I couldn't afford more than a certain amount of rice. I could barely purchase a single or two of heating charcoal even in the cold winter. In a daily basis, however, I enjoyed giving offerings to God, doing my best, and I obeyed as I was inspired in my heart. Even though I had nothing to eat the next day, when a servant of God or church workers visited me, I provided something for them, doing all my best. Mostly, I bought them on credit, and I served them. When there was too much credit, you know, I used to uh, live in a monthly rent room, and the deposit for the room was about $50, but the credit became more than 50 bucks. So I and my family had to move out to some other place to pay the credit from the deposit money that I made. Then God surely provided me with food the very next day. He never made me skip a day without a meal. I was living such a physically difficult life, 
and then I opened the third shop in July 9, 1977. Oh, I should testify to this because, you know, I want to tell you how God blessed me. It was the day when exactly three years passed by after my refinement began since my wife left home in July 10, 1974. From that moment on, great financial blessing came upon me and I didn't need to worry about daily food anymore. After the three-year refinement, I went to the Spirit. And as, as I entered the Spirit, the blessing began. God knew when I would enter the Spirit. God prepared everything, and as soon as I entered the Spirit, Father God began to give me blessing right after that. Moreover, I could finally financially help others and give for charity. More amazing financial blessing came upon me as I stopped the physical business, obeying the word of God in September 1978. On the day when three years passed by after I entered the Spirit, I opened the third shop. I mean, I mean, opened the third uh, store. And then blessing came on to me. But the earnest blessing began as God called me as his servant and told my wife to take care of the entire store. As I obeyed God when he told me to do so, as a servant of God, the real blessing began at this moment. The real blessing began when I obeyed. It was just as God said, if you obey, your rice container will never be empty and your cash box will always be full. The income of the first month when my wife ran the business all by herself was much more than before. It was about 600,000 Korean won. It was beyond our imagination to think about 600,000 won about you know, 30 years ago, I think. It was a great blessing that a small bookstore could earn such an amount in just a month. People heard the news about the store and came to the store to take a look. And the people around my shop visited my store. Why? They heard the news. The people that I had business with spread the news how well my business was run. So people kept visiting my store. They wanted to know the success secret of the store. By visiting my store, they want to know the secret. In such a blessing, I earnestly prepared the way to become a servant of God. I entered a theological seminary college in March 1978. I constantly fasted and prayed all night and devoted myself to be armed with the Word of God. As I obeyed and my wife took over the business, I ran another room for myself. To prepare a way as a servant of God, I ran another room to pray and fast and study the Word of God. It was a very cheap rent, dark and tiny little room it was. Since then, I've lived and walked this way alone. I walked alone the way of a servant of God, afar from my family. I began to live my life alone by myself from the moment I was called as a servant of God until today. I've lived like that. During the time when I armed myself with the Word, many people with various problems came to me. And through the meetings with me, their problems were solved and they were healed. Exactly three years after I entered the seminary college, in the last week of February 1982, I held my first revival meeting. Then I realized why God said to me, after you arm yourself with the word for three years, you will go across rivers and oceans and do miracles and wonders. The evidences that I entered the whole spirit began to appear. Even when I was a seminary student, I went to mountains with a small bag in which there were blankets, the Bible, and hymn book. I couldn't stay home because so many people came to my house to receive my counseling and prayer. I couldn't pray. So whenever summer or winter vacation began, I went to mountains, and there I prayed and fasted, arming myself with the Word of God and preparing the way of a servant of God. 
the evidences that I enter the Holy Spirit begin to appear. As you enter the Holy Spirit, it is the fifth level of faith, and signs follow as written in Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. It is written, these signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. As I started this church in July 25, 1982, more amazing signs began to follow. I already experienced before that many sick people were healed as I prayed for them. No one received another prayer. They were healed just once be, you know, because I lived my life with prayers. Then I started the church. People with all kinds of diseases heard about me and came to the church. Not only those with minor diseases, but also those with incurable diseases, which couldn't be cured in the hospital, and those who were demon-possessed came to the church. You know, from many parts of this country. You know, they came to me, and they came to my house. As I prayed for them, they were all healed, and they gave glory to God. Likewise, when you enter the Holy Spirit and pray for others, the healing works can take place, provided that you should be full of the Holy Spirit as you pile up fervent prayers. Even when you enter the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive the power of God from heaven. You should pile up fiery prayers. The power of God is given after you give fiery, fervent prayers and fasting. It cannot be given so easily. It is God who gives this power. It cannot be given easily. If it could, there should be many servants of God in the world who receive the power of God. But there are no. Why? They should pile the fiery prayers once they enter the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. Once you enter the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, even if you don't pray much, you will be always full of the Holy Spirit. However, to make the energy of the Spirit burn like fire, you should fervently pray. And as the energy of the Spirit burns like fire, the work of God's power can follow. Dear brothers and sisters, then is there any way to live such a blessed life like this even before you enter the Spirit? There is a secret to be able to live a healthy and blessed life even before entering the Spirit. But the secret will be unfolded in the next lecture. I urge you to understand this precious message by the Spirit and receive it by faith. As I told you earlier, God the Father promised that He would show the evidence that this message is true. May all of you take this God-guaranteed message with joy and thanks and become the man of blessing. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your love and mercy. Help them so that what they heard today can become life and faith in them. Father, work on them. Bless them to put what they heard into their heart and make bread of it. Help them understand what the spiritual principles are, why aging stops once they enter the Spirit, and why they can recover youth back as they enter the whole Spirit. I explain the reasons, and the Bible also explains you know, making examples of Abraham and Job. I explain. They can do it. They can do it too. May God bless them so that they can quickly enter the Spirit and Holy Spirit by faith and receive health both in spirit and body, and family evangelization and peace and financial blessing given to glorify God. Father God, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN and Mammin TV viewers, and those who are receiving this prayer via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts let all the trials and afflictions leave them. 
by the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Let all new and unknown diseases, including swine flu, depart from them, be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues, and cells, and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces, and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bones of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business, and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God's providence of creation. An amazing message of life about human salvation. We should fervently spread the evidences of the living God, the Creator. so that many more people can know God the Creator and fear Him.